Sit on a blanket if you want to so you can be really comfortable in your hips. <sighs> and then just breathe. Let your breath come in, go out through your nose. Feel that sense of shoulders feeling nice and wide and open. Let your eyes just be really gently closed and softly. Feel soft through your face too. Feel your breath coming into your belly. Good, and let's release our hands on out beside us here now. And inhale both arms all the way out and up overhead. And let our exhale bring our hands right down together in front of our hearts. And then we'll reverse and inhale the hands right on up through the midline. And on the exhale, open the arms on back out and down. And let's make a big circle with our arms. Inhale them forward and up. And, you know, be mindful. If it hurts to bring your arms back further, just go do the best you can, bringing the arms down. And then we'll reverse and reach back first up and over the top, and then let the arms come on forward and all the way back down again. Good, and then float your arms a little away from you and let your hands circle. So just circling through here, feeling your wrist, maybe even kind of wiggle your fingers around a little bit too as you circle. And then reverse those circles so you come the other way. Good, and then start to flex your hands so your fingertips face up and you just really press out into the heels of the hands and now you really feel the undersides of your arms. Pretty big time actually. And then from here, just release your arms on down, shake your hands out a little bit and let's start to move forward and back with our breath. So we just start to feel that sense of being able to move with our breath. Your exhales bring you forward and your inhales will bring you back up. It does not matter how far you go. It's like a rocking sensation, keeping your back long might mean that you come just a little bit forward or you might wanna come farther, it's totally up to you. And the next time you come forward, stay there. If you're in your chair and you feel like you want to separate your feet a little more and rest your elbows above your knees, do. If you're on the floor, you can have your hands on the floor. You can walk further out with your hands if you want to. Just let your head hang if possible, as long as it doesn't bother your neck. Let yourself feel that weight of your head and feel released through your neck and your jaw. And one more breath here. And then we'll slowly make our way on back up and let your feet come on again underneath you if you're in your chair. If you're cross-legged on the floor, switch your leg that's on in front so that you just <clears throat> bring the other leg in front, even yourself out a little bit there in your hips. And then bringing our arms on out beside us again. Let's inhale both arms all the way out and up overhead and let our exhale bring our hands down. <clears throat> and then we'll reverse and inhale the hands right up through the midline 
and on the exhale, open the arms on back out and down. Taking a nice inhale here, on your exhale, twist to your right, bring yourself on around. That left hand can come to your right knee or you can be more the midline with your hand if that's better. And let the back arm, let your right arm just release, just fingertips lightly touching the ground back there or arm just release down the back of your chair. And just enjoy, feel your sitting bones drawing down, feel your belly engaging a little bit. One more breath. And as we exhale, we're gonna come on back around through center and all the way into the other direction. So again, as you come into the twist, feel the spine waking up, feel that sense of sitting bones drawing down. Good, one more breath. And then slowly let yourself come on back around into center again. And just bend your elbows, let your hands come to meet in front of your chest. Lift your elbows up just a little bit so your hands are pressed more firmly together. And then let your elbows melt down and let yourself just lengthen upward through the top of your head. Seated mountain pose. And then we'll let our arms Come on down beside us, shake out a little bit. Let's come around towards hands and knees. And you know, if you don't wanna be on your knees, don't be. You know, you can use your chair seat to have your hands on. Or if your wrist bother you, remember, you can come on to fist if you'd rather, <clears throat> so that you're comfortable in your hands. You know, it is good to try to put some weight in your hands, but if it gets painful, uncomfortable, so that it feels almost like, you know, you really don't wanna be doing it, just switch, switch to fists so that you don't have a wrist crease there anymore. But get set with your feet or your knees under your hips, your hands under your shoulders. Look down there between your hands for a second. And then just turn your head to the right. Let yourself just turn to look to the right. And then look straight down between your hands again and just look over toward, towards the left. And then turn to look back down between your hands and then draw your chin towards your chest. Let yourself kind of look back behind you a little bit. And then go ahead and bring your gaze back between your hands. Inhaling here. And as you exhale, draw up into your cat pose. Feel that navel drawing towards the spine. Tailbone drops down. Let your head hang. And as you inhale, send your tailbone back and up, which allows the belly to drop down, the ribs to drop down. And you can look forward if you want, but you can still stay looking down if that's better for your neck and your cow pose. So exhale, draw the tailbone up under you, rounding up into that cat pose. And as you inhale, send the tailbone back and up and again, move on back through into your cow. And then one more time, exhaling, drawing into that cat pose. Really feel the spine articulating there and then inhale as you move back through into your cow. And then come back to your just normal neutral spine where you're just looking down between your hands and you're not really in cat and you're not really in cow. You've just got natural curves in your back. And let's bring our left foot forward and right foot back and come into lunge here. So you know your lunges are totally up to you how long of a stance you take. You may decide that you'd like to step pretty far back. You may decide to step with your heel staying on the floor of that back foot, but make sure that front knee is bent no farther forward than your ankle. And let yourself start to wake up here from the legs up into the hips. Enjoy opening through the back of that right leg. Good, and let's switch legs. Let's come to the other side. So again, finding that length of stance where you're comfortable, you start to feel that openness in the back of the left leg. Feel the shoulders drawn down away from your ears. Good. And we are gonna switch legs again. So bring that right leg back again. This time engage a little bit deeper if you can. Press the feet away from each other like you're trying to make your mat longer. If you feel like putting your left hand or forearm up onto your thigh, you can do that if you choose. Or you can keep both your hands down. Good, and we're gonna switch again. 
So coming to that left leg back, and again, pressing the feet away from each other like you're trying to make your mat longer with your feet. And you can decide if bringing the right hand up or not feels like a good idea to you. Good, and then let's come on down with our hands and step forward into our standing forward bend. So be really mindful, bend your knees as much as you need, or even if you wanna walk a little bit in your forward bend, bend one knee at a time if that feels good. And maybe even let your head turn side to side. Move your head around a little bit too. So that you can kind of make your way into your forward bend where you don't feel like you're forcing anything at all. It feels really natural. Use any height you want for your hands or your forearms. You know that. You can use your chair. You can put your elbows above your knees if that's better. Or you can let your arms hang down. Put your hands on blocks maybe. You just Really feel how your back feels. Don't force anything. Let your back just gently open up simply from you coming forward into that standing forward bend. And then watch your breaths. Easy, full, deep breaths all the way in, all the way out. Letting your face be soft. Letting go through your jaw. One more breath here. And then we'll let our hands come on up to our hips. We're gonna press into our feet and rise straight on up to standing, inhaling our arms all the way out and up overhead. And on our exhale, bringing our hands down together in front of our hearts. From here, just let your chin come down a little bit. Tilt your head forward. Kind of depends on you how far. Just let yourself release through your neck there. And then come on back up so that the top of the head reaches upward and shift a little bit front to back on your feet. So you get yourself feeling, you don't want to go too far because you'll fall over, but just so you get to feel sort of equal between the fronts of the feet and the heels, between your balls of your feet really and your heels. Once you feel even there, Go ahead as your gaze comes on out and forward like you're looking at the horizon. Come on into your mountain pose really easily. Feel your feet equal into the floor. Feel your thighs gently lifting upward and your tailbone dropping down like it's reaching towards between your heels. And then let's unfold our arms right on down beside us. Float your arms just a little breath away from you and turn your palms forward. Let yourself feel that sense of the palms forward and imagine that you're standing here between two panes of glass. And if you were, you feel extremely balanced, right? Balanced front to back, balanced front to side. And on your next inhale, keep floating your arms up and up up and up. You can go to a wide V or you can touch your fingertips together up there. And on the exhale, we're going to bend our knees and come on forward into standing forward bend. And let your next inhale help you find a nice long flat back. Whether you put your hands on your legs or your chair or your blocks, just lengthen out through the spine there. And we'll step the right foot back and come into lunge here. Draw your shoulders down away from your ears. Feel that belly engaging as you press your feet away from each other. And let's come on into downward facing dog pose. So you know your down dog is totally your choice whether your hands are on blocks or the floor or a chair. Really lengthen back through that tailbone. So imagine the length of your spine right now with your head in line with your spine, like the back of your head in line with your spine. And feel long through both sides of your body. Let yourself feel your hands, whatever surface they're on, and hug your elbows a little towards each other. And on the next inhale, we'll come out towards a plank. You don't have to go and do a full push-up pose. Totally up to you. Where you go with it. You can put your knees down and do half. You can put your forearms down and get out of your hands. If you like to bend your elbows, you can bend your elbows a little bit in towards your ribs if you want to come a little more into your arms and your shoulders. And then we'll come on back again into Downward Facing Dog Pose. 
Again, elbows hug towards each other. Really feel your hands on the surface they're on. And this time we'll bring the right foot forward to come into lunge. So that might mean you need to put your left knee down if you're on the floor. Or you might want to put both knees down and then bring that right foot forward. And then we'll come on back into our standing forward bend with our feet hips distance apart and parallel. And again, be really mindful of your own back, right? So as your torso is forward like this, it enables the backs of the legs to just gradually open up more and more. If you can let your head hang, you might be able to think about more space in your spine. And then, you know, a major part of a forward bend is just the way it helps you relax, right? It's very releasing and quieting. Watch your breath coming in and going out. Good, and then we'll bend our knees, press into our feet equally and bring our hands to our hips and rise straight on up. And inhale our arms all the way out and up overhead. And on our exhale, bring our hands down together in front of our hearts. Let's inhale the hands right back up through the midline. And on the exhale, open the arms like wings as you fold forward from your hips to come back into standing forward bend. And let your next inhale help you find that nice, long, flat back. So again, Tabletop back there, and this time left foot steps back to come into lunge. So think of your shoulders drawing down away from your ears, press your feet gently away from each other, feel how your belly engages here. Good, and we'll come on into downward facing dog pose again. So your choice of where your hands are for your dog. Take your time, walk a little bit in your dog if that helps you. Anytime you come to dog, if you wanna bend your knees or walk a little bit, you know, you need to move a little bit to make it more comfortable. Do it. Good. And then let your next inhale bring you towards that plank again. Again, nice and strong. Staying in your plank is fine. Going to half plank or forearm plank if you need, or letting yourself do little push-ups if you like to come into your arms and your shoulders a little bit more, you can. Just find that core strength here. Feel the belly engaging. Good, we're gonna come on back again into down dog. So again, remember when you come to dog, if you feel the need to bend your knees, do it. And then we'll bring our left foot forward. So however you need to get that left foot forward to come into your lunge. Draw your shoulders down again, away from your ears. And then we'll step back into standing forward bend again, feet hips distance apart, parallel. And again, just be mindful. You know, as you get warmed up, sometimes you feel like, oh, well, I could go a little bit deeper into that forward bend and it feels better and better, right? So, watch your breaths all the way in and out. See if you can feel those little spaces. So between your breaths, there are these little spaces. When you inhale, you feel a little space before you exhale. And the same thing at your exhale at the end. You feel a little space or a little pause before you inhale. So see if you can just find those spaces. Imagine you're just relaxing a little deeper in those little spaces between your breaths. And then from here, we'll bring our hands on up to our hips and bend our knees, press into our feet and come on up to standing. Inhaling our arms all the way out and up. And on our exhale, let our hands come right down together in front of our hearts. From here, unfold your arms for a second and just tilt your head to the right. Let your right ear come towards your right shoulder and let your left arm float up, not really too high, but just away from the body a bit and flex your hand. Let yourself just release there through the side of the neck. And then we'll rise the head back up, the arm back goes back down, and we're gonna go to the other side. So again, just a little bit, and you'll kind of know when you get to a good place, how high you want this arm to go up, right? 
it's no right or wrong, just where you feel a nice release through the side of the neck there. Good, and then we'll come on back up. And from here, let's bring our hands behind us. Clasp your hands and let your arms come down pretty straight, right? You're really sliding your hands down. You feel your shoulders way down away from your ears. Let yourself feel open across your chest. One more breath here. And then as you exhale, bend your knees and stop when you're about parallel to the floor, right? So you've got that tabletop back again, and it's about parallel to the floor. You can bend your knees as much as you want. It's really almost like your chest is melting down a little towards the ground. Good, one more breath. And then release, let your hands come on down and we're gonna step into a down dog from here. You put your hands on the surface you like to use and step your way back into a downward facing dog pose. And once you're in dog, do try to bend one knee at a time and walk your dog a little bit and turn your head a little bit side to side too. So it feels really good. Feel your whole body in your dog. Be aware of how your shoulders feel and your hips and of course your spine. And come on back into your full dog and on the next inhale we'll come out to that plank again. Now it is obviously not necessary to do a back bend. You can if you want. You can come down to the floor if you're on the floor and go into a sphinx or you can come through for a uh, cobra or an up dog. Not necessary to do a back bend at all. And then we'll come on back again into downward facing dog pose. Again, ease your way into dog if you need to bend your knees or walk do. Because we're gonna do that again, we're gonna come out to plank and again, totally optional to do a back bend here. You can come down to the floor, you can do a little cobra, you can do a little sphinx, you can come into an up dog if you choose. And then we'll make our way again into downward facing dog pose. Stretching out back through that tailbone and think about the back of your head being in line with your spine. And we will bring our right foot forward to come into lunge from here. However you need to get it there. Good. And then we'll come all the way back into standing forward bend. So letting this be your resting pose, whatever kind of support you need for it to feel that way, right? Not not feeling any stress in your back. Really just letting the pose, allow the backs of the legs to open up, allow yourself to find space in your spine. And just be with your breath all the way in and out. Watching that wave of your breath coming in and going out. And then we'll bring our hands up to our hips, press into our feet as we rise up to standing. And we'll inhale our arms all the way out and up overhead. And as we exhale, let our hands come right down to be in front of our hearts. So take your time. If you need to look at your feet or adjust your way into your mountain pose, by all means do, just so you can feel very grounded equally through your feet. And when you do end up bringing your gaze forward with your hands at your heart, you can feel that gentle connection of your hands there together. So just very lightly, feeling the hands lightly come together. Feeling nice and balanced from right to left side. And the same thing from the front to the back. It's like you feel really balanced all the way around, side to side, front to back. Letting go through the face and the jaw. Nice, and then we'll let our arms release on down beside us and move around a little bit. Shake out whatever you need to do. Walk around a little bit if you need to. I'm gonna flip my chair around and have your blocks handy in case you need them. We're gonna step our right foot back and come into warrior two. So we'll line up our heels and bend into that left knee. Remember, lining it up over the center of your foot. So making sure you get that sense of not letting that knee come inward, right? And then from here, let's, let's let our hands come to be in front of our heart. So balancing out again here, feeling really equal between our feet. 
And then inhale the hands up through the midline. We're gonna open the arms like wings and let them come on down into warrior two arms, turning the palms down towards the ground, letting yourself look out over the top of that left hand. And let your feet feel very equal in the floor. Even imagine you're making your mat longer with your feet. Feel how your hips engage. And then we'll turn that left palm up. We're gonna inhale, reach up towards the sky. Feel a nice full breath coming into the left side. And on your next exhale, come on into your side angle. Whether you use your chair or your leg, it can be your hand down on your leg, it can be your forearm down onto your chair or your leg. And if you wanna add the right arm up into line with the right side of the body, you can. And if you know that is too much for your shoulder, don't do it. You know, put the hand on the hip or bring the hand straight up from your shoulder if that's better, so that you're okay in your shoulder. Good, nice length through the spine, beautiful. We're gonna come on back into warrior two. Let the feet press gently away from each other. It helps you get back up into that strong warrior two pose. And we'll bring the hands on down. We're gonna turn our feet more parallel so that when we come forward, we can grab blocks of course if we want. Come forward, the hands either on blocks or the floor into your wide-legged forward bend. And go ahead and let one knee bend a little bit at a time to Adjust your way. Now take your time here. You know if it hurts to bend the knee, don't do it. Good. And then see about bending both knees at the same time. Let your elbows rest above your knees for a second. So you're in that squat. Your spine is lengthened out. One more breath here. Come on down either to the floor or the blocks with your hands and let's walk our hands over towards the right or just walk with your blocks over to the right as far as you want to go once you get as far as you can feel comfortable to go bring your right hand on up to your hip and you might even want to roll the shoulder up and look to the right a little more right totally up to you and then come on back down with that right hand. We're gonna walk back through center. Again, it can be your blocks or it can be your hands on the floor. You go as far over towards that left as you want towards the foot. And then when you're there, left hand on up to the left hip. Optional to let yourself look to the left and roll that shoulder up a little bit. And then we'll come on back down with our hand. We're gonna walk back into center again. And now take your time, set yourself up to stay in the pose for a few breaths where you can comfortably be in the pose, right? Where you're not, you're not feeling discomfort. You can use support under your hands, under your forearms, getting out of your hands. You can use the blocks. You can let yourself bring your hands back and just hang your head if you want. But see if you can, let the breaths come in maybe a little fuller and deeper now. Feeling the expansion of the ribs as you inhale. Good. So one more full deep breath. Rise up. If you need to adjust your feet a little bit differently before you come up, do that so that it's easy to come up, right? And if you're dizzy, be mindful there too, right? You can use your chair if you need it. Walk around if you want to. We're going to make our way to the other side here. So this time it'll be the left foot that steps back. And the heels are in that line. And that right knee, remember, right out over the center of the foot. If you look at it, just make sure it's not tracking inward. You know, you don't want it to come out over into the inside of your foot. Certainly not to where you can't even see the arch of your foot, right? And then just be mindful here as you bring your hands to your heart. Let yourself feel very centered. So centered between your feet. Feeling very equal up into your legs and your hips. And as we inhale the hands right up through the midline now and open the arms like wings, turn the palms down as you start to lower the arms down into warrior two. Feeling the feet pressing gently away from each other, softening the tops of the shoulders down. 
Really enjoy, feel that sense of being so strong in your warrior two and balanced. And then we'll turn that right palm up. Let's inhale, reach up towards the sky. Let yourself take a nice full breath to, in order to expand the right ribs. And as you exhale, come into that side angle where you either put your hand or your forearm on your thigh or your chair. And it depends on you. Remember, spine is lengthened out. You're not dropping into that underside of the body. You're nice and long. Adding the left arm only if you want to, right? You can add the arm up into line with the left side of the body with the palm facing down towards the ground. Or you can have the hand on your hip. Remember, don't force anything in your shoulder. Just really enjoy finding that length through both sides of the body. Beautiful, one more breath. And we're gonna come back to warrior two. Feel the feet pressing gently away from each other. That's what gets you back into that strength there. Up into the hips and the belly and the low back. And then we'll come on down with our hands. We're going to turn our feet again more parallel. And again, you grab what you need as you come a foot forward into that wide-legged forward bend. If you need blocks, use them. If you like your hands on the floor. And you know, as you bend a knee a little bit at a time, if you want to adjust how far apart your feet are, do it. Sometimes you're too wide and you need to get a little less wide. Sometimes you want to go wider, right? So just be mindful, let it feel good. And then when you're ready to even out your legs, let yourself either have both your knees equally bent or both legs straight. But try to press away from each other your feet. So you're trying to make your mat longer with your feet. Feel what happens. Imagine now that your inner thighs are wanting to go back behind you and your sit bones kind of widen out. Right. Just stay there for a couple of breaths. And then when you're ready to release where you want to stay in the pose, that is up to you. I mean, if you want to reach down and get your ankles and let your head hang, do. Or put your hands between your feet. And of course, if you know that is not good for your back, staying with that long back. You know, I love to use the blocks to get out of my hands if I'm going to stay forward. But just be mindful and last of all, Think about your head and feeling the weight of your head and letting go through your face. So soft through your face, soft all around your mouth and letting go through your jaw. Remember sometimes if you just let your lips lightly be touching. start to think about rising up. Again, if you need to adjust before you come up, do it. If you, your feet need to come a little closer together or farther apart or whatever before you come up to standing. And then if you're dizzy, again, be mindful. If you're feeling just a little bit dizziness, be careful. Walk around however you need. And this time, if you're using your chair, turn the seat of the chair around to face you and do have your blocks handy. Certainly, if you don't have a chair, you want your blocks towards the front of your mat. And we're going to come forward so that our feet are towards the front of the mat. And then we're going to step our right foot back for warrior one, front facing warrior. So right here, if you reach your hands, actually let your arms for a second. Once you get your feet grounded, let's do right foot back. Right? So everybody right foot back. So we're, yeah. And then let yourself look down a little bit. Check out the alignment of that front knee. Feel okay in that back foot. And let your arms swing a little bit, right? So if you're looking towards the front corners of your mat, you're thinking about your arms swinging kind of towards the corners of your mat there, right? So once you start to now, let the arms just release and hang. You're going to let your gaze come forward. And there you are. You feel really balanced between your feet. It's going to be very easy to inhale the arms out and up overhead 
And you can keep your arms as wide as you choose. They can even be forward of your shoulders. If your shoulders are having a problem with bringing your arms up overhead, don't force it. Palms face each other. Let yourself feel your feet even in the floor. And if you want to continue to look up a little bit, just feel how the belly has to work, right? You feel a lengthening down through that right top buttock muscle, really. And you really use the belly to feel that protection for your low back. One more breath. And then bring your gaze back forward, lower your arms on down. We're gonna straighten that front knee out and think about getting your hip pointer square now to the front edge of your mat. And we're gonna come on forward. You can use your chair for your hands in pyramid pose. You can bring your hands down to the blocks if you'd rather, whatever height you wanna be. Once you get your hands down in pyramid, if you want to adjust your stance a little bit, do. So if you want to get shorter or longer in your stance, the back heel is fully on the floor and that back foot is turned out maybe 20, 30 degrees. Now think about a flat back here, right? So if you know that you're kind of like this, you're rounding up into your back like that, see if you can think about coming into more of a tabletop back which really increases the stretch in the backs of your legs mind you now feel the thighs lifting up towards the hips imagine your tailbone reaching back behind you so try not to curl your tailbone up under you it's actually reaching back good one more breath Good. We're going to bend the front knee and come into full lunge, releasing now that right heel so it reaches directly behind your foot. You're bending the front knee now. And we're going to bring our left hand to our left hip and turn on up into a twist here. Hand can stay right there on your low back. You can, if you want, stretch your arm up overhead. If that bothers your shoulder, just keep your hand down. Enjoy lengthening out through the top of your head, finding that twist in the middle of your back. Good. And then we'll come on back down with the hand. We're going to step forward and come on into feet, hips distance apart and parallel right underneath us. And then just bend your knees. Let your weight shift a little to your heels, just a little. Let your hips release there. And then go ahead and bring your hands up to your hips and rise on up to standing. And we'll inhale the arms all the way out and up overhead. And on our exhale, let our hands come right down together in front of our hearts. And just enjoy. Let your hands barely touch here. Just so lightly touching, it kind of almost brings your awareness more into the hands when they're that lightly touching, right? Because you almost have to concentrate to feel that they're together. And then feeling your feet in the floor. Letting your tailbone drop down like it's reaching down between your heels there, kind of maybe even a little behind your heels. And then we'll go ahead and release our arms on down beside us and shake out a little bit, move around. We're gonna do the other side. So again, you're stepping towards the front of your mat. This time, left foot comes back for warrior one. So you gotta kind of get you know, some people want to be a little wider in their stance in Warrior One. Some people want to have their heels more in a line. But you want to think about having your shoulders square. So if you look down at your front knee, make sure it's not going out beyond your toes, and you're grounded in that back foot, and your hands kind of reach towards the corner of the mat, and then you can start that swinging. Now, you really have to use your core body if you're going to swing your arms like this. Otherwise, you're going to be all over the place, right? So. Think about as you swing your arms, you bring your gaze forward and you let yourself just really enjoy feeling that strength in the core of the body. And then let the arms just slowly start to come just to hang. Let them just hang. And we'll start to rise the arms forward, palms face each other. Again, you can separate your arms wider. You can keep the arms forward more in an open V. Or you can have the hands more above your shoulders if your shoulders let you do that. Totally up to you if you want to keep bringing your gaze up, feeling that lift. Again, the belly really has to work. The lift is right here underneath your shoulder blades. You're not feeling any compression in your low back, even if you do add this bit of a back bend in your warrior one. So just enjoy. Feel energy all the way out through your fingertips if you can. 
and we're going to bring our gaze forward, lower our arms on down now, and we're going to straighten that front knee out. So both legs are straight for pyramid. Your hip pointer bones are squared off to the front of your mat, right? And then once you start to bring your hands down, you can decide, do you want to put your hands all the way down on the blocks? Do you want to use the chair seat? And maybe when you get your hands down, it doesn't feel quite right till you adjust your legs. And that's fine. That back heel is on the floor and the back foot is turned out maybe 20 or 30 degrees. And your back is again attempting to be flat. So if you find yourself rounding up into your back, send your tailbone back and let yourself find that nice flat back and feel your thighs lifting up towards your hips. It's intense in the backs of the legs. But if you're using the muscles there all around the knees and your thighs to lift up, then you're protecting yourself from overstretching. One more breath. Good. We're going to bend the front knee now to reach into lunge. So sometimes you want to reach a little farther back with that left foot. The heel is now going directly behind your foot. To add your twist, right hand comes to the right hip. You can roll your shoulder up, put your hand right there on your sacrum, and leave it right there if you want. So the twist is really in the middle of the back. You're trying not to drop into the left side of the body. And then you can stretch your right arm up if you want to. Totally not necessary to reach that arm up. Shoulders don't always like that, that's for sure. One more breath. And then bringing your hand on back down. If it was up, we're going to step forward and bring ourselves in again to hips distance apart and parallel with our feet. Let your head hang for a second. If you want to bend your knees, bend your knees. Or if you want to walk a little bit. Remember that bending a knee at a time. Letting yourself ease your way. And then come on back into both knees bending a little bit. Press down into your feet as you bring your hands to your hips and rise on up to standing. And we'll inhale our arms all the way out and up. And as we exhale, let the hands come on down to be in front of our hearts. And be mindful, if you need to adjust, do it. If you need to sway a little bit, sway a little bit. If you need to find your footing, you know, to where you have your feet just the right distance apart where you feel grounded equally through your feet. And then whether your eyes are opened or closed, Imagining you're looking way out to the horizon. Nice. And we're going to go ahead and let our arms come on down beside us. Shake out a little bit and move around. Let yourself walk around a little bit. And you know, we've got plenty of wall space today. So let's take our blocks and walk over to find a place at a wall. So you have room to stretch out because we're going to do a little bit of half moon. So you want plenty of space. Yeah, you're there. And then Kathy, you can actually come over there. And Helen, you can use that wall. Kathy, you can be up in front of Leslie here. And I think you're just the right height to be right there in that space. So have your blocks in your hands and turn your, let's turn our left shoulder towards the wall. All right. And come down with your blocks under your hands like you are doing a standing forward bend. Okay. So your left foot is maybe, I don't know, three, four inches away from the floor. I mean the wall, all right? <laughs> from, the, from the floor, left, levitate, no. From the wall, all right? And your hands are right underneath your shoulders. So now see if you can walk your blocks maybe a little more towards your pinky toe side of your foot. So the blocks are not directly in front of your feet, but a little to the outside, you see what I'm saying? And then from here, bring your right leg up, little warrior three. This might be where you want to stay. So that outside leg is up, right? If you want to practice a little half moon at the wall, you can shift your weight to your left hand and bring your right hand on up to your right hip and lean into the wall. And that right foot is flexed and the toes are just facing a little bit down towards the ground. And you are more than welcome <laughs> to reach your top arm up overhead if you want to. If you don't like this opening of the hip for the half moon, just stay with the leg and do a little warrior three with the toes facing down, okay? Don't force anything in your hip because these are big hip openers, but 
The wall back there feels pretty good. Take your time, let yourself just play a little bit with that, lengthening out through your spine, whether you're in the half moon or you're in that warrior three. Good, and then we'll come on back down. Bring the foot down, let your knees bend, shift your weight a little more to your heels, let yourself release in your hips there. Good, and we are gonna come to the other side, so you might wanna have your blocks in your hands as you come on up and just turn around. And then have yourself, again, hands on the blocks, highest height. And again, kind of adjust. You know, you, you won't really know if you want to do the half moon closer to or farther from the wall until you try it. So once you lift your left outside leg up, toes face down, there's a warrior three. And that's, that's fine. Stay right there if you know that's enough for you. Right? Half moon is a totally different story when you start to open the toes away from the floor and you shift your weight onto your right hand. But you do have the wall there that you can lean into. And you can decide whether you like doing that or not. So not everybody's hips want to do a half moon pose. All right, so listen to your own hips. Pay attention, let yourself, if you're strengthening that supporting leg, Either way you are, so whatever pose you choose. We're gonna come on back down with our hands, bring your foot down, and go ahead and shift your weight to your heels and release. See if you can bring your elbows above your knees too. Take your hands off the blocks and just rest with your elbows above your knees, let your back release there. Now if anybody wants to squat lower, you can. So you can squat down. You can, if you want, turn, because you're right at the wall here. You can put your back to the wall and slide down the wall if you want to squat that way and let the wall help you. Now, this is really deep in the hips and in the knees, so don't do these kind of squats if you know they're not for you. You can use the wall and sit at the wall like that, yeah, so that you don't go all the way down, too, which feels really good. Good. One more breath. And then we're gonna slowly come up because we do need to get back to our mats. So unless you're gonna crawl your way back, I would suggest you have to come up. And then we'll come on back and uh, we're gonna come down onto our bellies on the floor. So take your time, come down and just feel really good about resting your forehead on your hands. Bend your knees and let your feet move around back there. You can do any kind of foot movement you want. You can let your legs go side to side, the windshield wiper blade movement if you want to. Good. And then separate your knees wider towards the outer edges of your mat and let your feet just kind of come together to prop each other up. So your feet are up there, your, your knees are apart. If it feels good to your hips, you can let your, your feet come down towards the mat. Don't do that if it's too much, you know? And if you don't even like the feet being propped up, don't do it, right? So just letting your hips release as best you can and your low back. and then come on back up with the feet. Bring yourself back to long legs underneath your hips. So get yourself settled back into a long body here. And then bend your right knee and flex your right foot. And let your head, if possible, come just a little bit up off your hands. There's a half bow pose right there. You know, you're using your back body a little bit. So that's the back bend and you're getting into your quad there of that right leg. And then bring your head and your leg back down. And we'll do the other leg, left leg, flex the foot, pull the heel in towards your buttocks, and then just barely lift your head up a little bit. Let yourself stay there for a couple of breaths. Good, and then come on back down, long legs. See if you can come into Sphinx Pose now, just bringing your elbows pretty close to under your shoulders. If that's too much for you, bring them down towards your waist more so you're not up so high. 
So it's a back bend. Usually Sphinx pose for most people feels pretty good, but if it doesn't, adjust accordingly, okay? Now from here, as you look between your hands there, bring your right foot off the floor and flex it again. Now don't, don't pull the heel in so much. Keep your belly really engaged. There's another version of half bow pose. And then bring that foot back down and go to the left, flex through the foot. Imagine you're putting a footprint on the ceiling and really keep your belly engaged. Good, and then come on back down. Let's bring ourselves down again with the head. Bring our arms down alongside our body. Turn your palms down towards the ground and let your hands be not on your mat, but on the floor. So they're out a little bit away from you. And then on your next inhale, float everything you can up off the floor. So the head, the chest, the hands, the legs, what you can get up, do. And then as you exhale, lower back down. And take a breath into your low back. Good. And on your next inhale, float up again. Just let yourself feel really, really like you're floating up. Not like you're tensing everything up to get up there. And then come back down again. Once you're down with your head, bend your knees again. Let your lower legs come a little tiny bit side to side. Good, and then come on back down again and bring your hands in by your chest and lift your head off the floor again. And so for this cobra, there's a cobra right here. You don't have to be any higher than this to be in a cobra pose because you're engaging your back muscles to lift yourself up. Now, if you wanna press into your hands and come up higher, some people it feels almost better than staying low, right? so amazing how different we all receive these poses. So shift your hips back a little bit. Take your time. Let yourself just shift not all the way to child pose, but just enough to get out of your hands. Good. And then you can decide. Sometimes coming into Cobra from here feels better to people, right? So you can come forward. You can kind of decide, well, do I want to walk my knees a little further forward? How do I want to get my chest to come forward here and feel really the best way I can about it? So sometimes coming to Cobra from up instead of from down the floor feels better, but not always. So shift back again, and this time do find your child's pose. So you can have child's pose with your hips up in the air, you know that. You can shift your hips back towards your heels, and let your arms be wherever is comfortable for you. Right? So if you're up on your forearms, at least let your head hang maybe. Let your hips release back a little bit. Let yourself find a release for your back and your hips. And if you're all the way down with your hips towards your heels, you can let yourself either rest your head on your hands, use your hands like a pillow, or you can bring the arms back alongside your legs. Turn the palms up towards the ceiling. But find what's comfortable for you and bring your breath into your low back. Nice, easy breaths. Good. One more breath. come up. Really take your time so you can use your hands to help you however you want. We're just going to swing our legs on around in front of us. So once you get up there and you bring your legs out long, just kind of be nice to your legs for a second. Circle your feet around. Maybe let yourself kind of massage your thighs a little bit. Or a fun thing to do is to like kind of play with your kneecaps a little bit. Right? So you kind of like feel Feel how your knees feel when you move the kneecaps around. It's so cool the way they float, isn't it? Appreciate your knees a little bit. And feel lucky that we have them and we're able to do stuff with them still, right? So let's come down onto our backs on the floor from here. So take your time, come on down, bend your knees, let yourself uh, bring your feet to the floor. And then just let your knees come a little bit side to side so you can enjoy letting your back release. And you can go as far down towards the ground with your knees as you want. 
And if you bring your arms out beside you into kind of a T position, or even bring them up a little higher, like if your arms are up more like in a Y shape, sometimes that feels even better because when your knees come down, It can be your favorite twist that you get to do, or you feel like any other pose or movement sounds like a good idea. By all means, let yourself. Just be mindful. If you need anything, wave at me. And just let yourself accept your breath now. Receiving those inhales and exhales. Just feeling that wave of your breath as it comes. 
comes in and goes out. Just appreciate how your body responds to the breath calming down. Your body does the same thing, and so does your mind. Your mind just maybe needs a little more reminding. <laughs> so when you go off into thinking, just allow yourself to come back to your breath over and over and over again. Giving yourself time to benefit from all you just did. And allow yourself just to find those little quiet places, trusting your body to benefit there in whatever way it needs. As you let yourself completely and fully relax. <sighs>